Now we're about to head off. Shall we start moving? Yeah, let's move. Almost every day we see dolphins or some sort of wildlife. Hello! Oh, there's a lot of them, my God. We had a couple of pretty rolly sort of night. We're just gonna go very easy. Yeah, feels great. Let's hope that we don't have any uh, encounters with shipwrecks or become a shipwreck today. Here we are in uh, the beach of Galati, which is where we've spent the night. Uh, it's the first night we've been uh, staying in an anchorage that's so exposed, it's essentially just a beach. Now we're about to head off. It's 7 a.m. <laughs> I'm pretty exhausted. I haven't slept more than three hours in the last two nights. We're gonna head to Rochella Ionica now and Hopefully get some sleep in the marina there. So I just wanted to say over the last few days we've had an opportunity to test out some new gear that we've uh, installed on the boat. One of which is <laughs> these very cool headsets which you may have seen on the episode where we tested out Arnie and Jane's beautiful ML50. Yeah, right there. All there. Somewhere. Click on the eye somewhere. <laughs> They're a lot of fun to use and they make life so much easier. Oh, yeah. Law particularly enjoys them because there's less shouting involved and uh, less uh, aggression on the high seas. <laughs> but it's smoother like that. The whole procedure of dropping the anchor is much smoother and... Dropping the anchor and also mooring. So we'll use them when we come into Rochella Ionica to the marina this afternoon. And the second product that we've given a test now in two different scenarios at Porto Paolo, at the uh, town key in Syracuse, and now here in uh, Galati, is the Ultra Flip Swivel, which uh, so far so good. Not a single time has the anchor flirted too closely with the bow of the boat as it's been coming up. Very curious to see how we go today because I have the feeling we may have anchored into rocks. So we're leaving a little bit earlier just in case. I've learned a technique over the winter in case we do foul the anchor, how we could get it out. I bought a piece of, uh, of chain that I would then run down the inside of our chain down to the anchor and then pull from in front from the dinghy. I haven't had to put that into practice yet, but uh, let's hope we don't have to anytime soon. But we've got the uh, provisions on board if needs be. <laughs> anyway, Shall we start moving? Yeah, let's move. Okay, see you later. See ya. Okay, so my criticism with sailing Italy is on the southern end of Italy there is a huge lack of any form of shelter. If you want to make money, open a marina in the south of Italy and I'm sure you'll be a millionaire overnight. But one thing I do love about sailing Italy is since we've been here, even since arriving in Sardinia, Almost every day we see dolphins or some sort of wildlife. So Laura's just prepared hot chocolate for the Dahlia crew. And who show up but some dolphins in the distance. Where are they? Can you see them anymore? I can't see them anymore. Let's see if they come and uh, track us down for some Belgian hot chocolate. Ah, yeah, they're still over there. They're still in the distance. Chocolate! Get your chocolate! <laughs> Sailing in the Mediterranean, when you have to 
arrange your passage in line with the uh, Marinero siesta time. Got to get there at 12.50. That gives us 10 minutes to get diesel and get in our mooring before the Marineros go on their siesta break for two hours. <laughs> is it really a siesta or is it just lunch? Like everyone deserves to have lunch. A two hour lunch break. Why not? <laughs> Not on my watch. Okay, admittedly, the lack of sleep made me a little more grumpy than usual. I'm sure the marineros work very hard for that break. So we finally arrived here in Marina in Rochella Ionica. Uh, we're not in the berth yet uh, because we arrived a bit too, too early and the marineros are actually having lunch right now from noon till three in the afternoon. So we just docked next to the petrol station, which is a good thing because we need some petrol. So as soon as they open, uh, we'll get some fuel and then we'll go to the berth and we'll probably stay here for the next two or three nights, depending on the weather, obviously. But it feels really great to, um, to be stable on board because these last five or six nights it was actually at anchor but um yeah feels great as you can see i'm a bit red i think i got a sunburn today which is weird because i put some sun cream on my face but it's really hot here as well this is the first time that uh, we really feel like it's summer uh, it's actually not summer yet but it feels like summer Anyway, uh, we are gonna go to the burst very soon. Ah. The marineros are ready, let's go to the berth. Marina Rochella, this is Talia, go ahead. Good afternoon, Talia. Did you finish with the refueling? Yes, we've just finished refi refueling and we're ready to uh, moor up whenever you are. We are ready, Captain. So you can uh, start to approach uh, the first pontoon on your port side just after the fishing boat. First pontoon on your port side. Perfect. First pontoon on the port side after the fishing boats. Okay, I will see you there in about five minutes. We'll just uh, get ready and, and head over. Okay, when you're ready, you can start. Many thanks. Uh, standing by on 1-4. What's up guys, so Hi. here we are at uh, Rochella Ionica, the first full day that we've been here and uh, I've been busy working on the next episode and just checking on the engine, giving it a small service before we go on to the next passage to Crotone. And I've been busy cooking for lunch and I also went to the supermarket because we needed some fresh fruits and veggies. Yeah, I went to a supermarket that is 20 minutes walk from here, but I had to walk on the highway, or at least it was a road, a 50 kilometer road. You walked for 50 kilometers? Wow. No, it was a 50 kilometers per hour road. <laughs> but you know, in Italy, people drive like they, they're crazy. They, I'm sorry huh, if you are Italian watching this episode, but sometimes 
I saw some people, they were driving like 120 km per hour, so it was a bit scary. Anyway, I'm safe now and uh, we are enjoying the sunset. Yeah, so we're having a nice little relaxing afternoon. As you know, we've been at anchor every day for the last five or six days. So uh, we had a couple of pretty rolly sort of nights. Well, one in particular in Galati, this uh, very exposed beach. But uh, having had one relaxing night here and we've got another two nights in this marina. We're just going to go very easy yeah. and... Uh, just a bit of rest and recuperation for the next big trip to Crotone. So the next trip is about 65 nautical miles and we uh, will wake up early to do that on Monday morning. It's predicted that we should have a nice following wind to get there. Quite strong, like uh, I think we saw gusts of early to mid 20s. Hopefully that means we can switch the engine off and uh, Sail properly. Sail properly, exactly. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. It is 5.30 in the morning here in Rochella Ionica. We've been awake now for 30 minutes, just uh, getting ourselves ready for the day. And uh, it's a beautiful sunrise over here. Uh, so we're just about to prep the boat and we should leave in the next 15 minutes from now. Time to warm up the engine. something like 6.30. Is that an okay time to arrive? Yeah. You should still have some sunlight. Yeah, the sun light is until 8. Hopefully once the wind picks up we'll get a bit of speed as well, so it should be okay. So as we're making our crossing here today from Rochella Ionica to Crotone, we're crossing the Golfo of Squillace, so the Gulf of Squillace. And this is affectionately known by a lot of mariners as the Bay of Squalls. In ancient times they said that offshore here, despite what it looked like from the coast, offshore it was often very stormy and very squally. Now, we're sitting up here drinking our hot chocolates and it doesn't look to be the case so far that we're in for any storms or squalls, but uh, I prefer not to tempt fate. In ancient times, the Greeks referred to this place as the Gulf of Athena Skeletikos. She was a goddess of shipwrecks. I didn't actually know until today that there was a goddess of shipwrecks. I'm not sure if that's a good thing for or against shipwrecks. I'm hoping it's against. Anyway, let's hope that we don't have any uh, encounters with shipwrecks or become a shipwreck today. So Lord's just spotted dolphins in the distance. Whenever they're around, they see us and they'll come straight for us. You watch. Yeah, they're coming at us, you're right. They're taking a course over ground directly at us. Oh, there's a lot of them, my god! Hello! Oh, wow!
So we're about three hours out of Crotone now and we have officially crossed the Bay of Squalls with no squalls. Uh, fortunately, the weather did turn around and do as predicted and came at us from the southwest. And uh, we had a nice beam reach and we're broad reaching as we speak. Uh, unfortunately, there hasn't been a huge amount of wind. We've had maximum sort of 11 knots of wind speed. So we've been motor sailing and we've been clearing six, uh, sometimes seven knots of, of boat speed. Uh, so we are shortly going to around the Cape here to start heading north up into Crotone. But for the time being, we're having a very, very leisurely cruise along the uh, south coast of Italy here. It's a beautiful place. Lots of wind turbines here, which is great. It means they're into sustainable, renewable energy here. Just not so sure how beautiful it looks along the coastline. But hey, it does the job. That's the most important thing. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe to make sure you don't miss a single one of our weekly episodes. Catch you next Thursday. Cheers, legends.